Welcome to Great Gadgets and Gear. Hi, I'm having nothing but a pain in the butt trying to shoot this video. Alright, this is my version of the Harbor Freight 10 drawer cart. I got the idea from Mako Patrol 22. Check out his channel. He has a very long, instructive video on exactly how to make this cart. In his version, you have to cut the top of the toolbox off. In my version, you don't. Jerry Rig Everything. Cool channel. Check it out. Him and his wife. Really cool. They have a product called the Rig, not a wheelchair. Curious? Go check it out. Very cool. Good luck to them on their adventure. Okay, let's see if we can get through this. <laughs> so, when I started out, I took a bunch of pictures, so hopefully this will help. That's what I started out with. All right, I already built it, so then obviously I had to take it apart. So, when I took it all apart, here's your base. Put on your four swivel casters. Then there is this long piece with two tabs on either end. There's a tab there, tab there. Make sure it's oriented this way with the tabs away from you. Okay? And that's where the lower part of the toolbox sits because it's narrow. So what you do is you mount this on the front and back and the first top holes there. This is what's going to support the toolbox. Yes, you lose all this bottom space, but you get to retain the height for the toolbox. So give and take on this thing. You don't need the side supports. Don't worry. This is just to keep the toolbox up so it functions. All right. Before you put the toolbox on or the uh, side supports on, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut the top. Or I'm sorry. You don't have to cut the top of the box. What am I saying? <laughs> you have to remove the top of the box. There's a piano hinge here, and it has a bunch of black pop rivets in it. Just drill those out, this thing comes right off. Simple, easy peasy. Okay, so once you remove the top of the box, the lid of the box, I don't know why I keep saying the top of the box. <laughs> but once you remove that, you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing you do is you put on your four supports, side supports. Okay, your four side supports. Set the box in to make a measurement because the next thing you're going to have to do because of that piano hinge it's got a lip there that held it on place so it sticks out you're going to have to make some notches on the left and right side of the toolbox of the top of it so it when you drop it down it slides in between the posts there so it sits properly so it sits like that so you're not trying to bend the arms around that extra piece of steel there okay and if you notice too you don't do anything with the locking portion just just uh, I don't know what's going on with my camera <laughs> you don't have to do anything about the locking portion the, the little pillars leave the black caps on and everything you don't have to do nothing with that right now all right so you got your four posts up, you got your box dropped in, you got your notches cut. The next step is where these bolts are. Before you put those bolts in, you take another one of these center supports. Just one, just at the front. Because the back is going to, uh, you know, it's sitting on this lower portion. So it's up, you know, it's up here. You're going to use that to support when you put the second box on because there's nothing here to support it you don't put it on the back because you have the locking mechanism back there and it would block it and in my version I'm going to show you how to make this so all 10 drawers lock so you just put that extra piece right here then you can lower on your toolbox and go from there if you don't want it to lock this is where the grinder part comes in if you want your toolbox to lock Take the top box, lay it on its back so the drawers are facing up so you're looking at the bottom. This is what the bottom looks like close up. Okay, that little tab that's circled there, that is the locking mechanism. That is the bottom of the drawer. Do not cut that. <laughs> that's where my boo-boo happened. Do not cut that because that's what locks. The drawers in place when the little bar slides down 
Okay, so if you see below that though, I drilled two holes. So you want to stay at the back section. Let's say that this is the the thickness of this bar here. You want to stay at the back because the locking mechanism is only about an inch in height and probably about an inch and a half wide. So you want to cut out let me get this oriented again, sorry. You want to cut out the back section of that bar in a rectangle. And you want to do that because this bar that's here comes down to lock onto the drawers. So you're cutting that because it's going to need to pass through here to get to the bottom box. To get to these two pillars. Okay. So cut that out with a grinder if you want your drawers to lock. If you don't, you can just throw the second box on the top. Where you go from there, after you have the two boxes on top of each other, see this is what hap this is what it looks like when the two boxes are sitting on top of each other. This is the I took the drawer out, the bottom drawer like I told you. You see you can see inside. This is how it lines up. You want to make sure that that top pillar lines up with the black from the bottom of the box. That's the locking mechanism from the bottom. This one is for the locking mechanism at the top. Okay, so that's important because we're going we're gonna to come back to that later. Okay, so then once you have the box sitting on top, it'll look like that. Well, sort of like that. The next thing you want to do is put on the side supports uh, to attach them to the top of the box only for now okay you got your box sitting on the other box it should be all lined up perfectly as long as you lined up those back two sections over the locking mechanisms then what you're going to have to do after you have these all screwed in on all four corners is you're going to have to get some clamps to force these rails together to be as close together as you can get them and you're going to have to drill some holes um, in different places. I had to drill some extra holes because mine don't line up perfectly like Mako Patrols do, do because I left that height on the bottom here which made my cart overall a few inches taller and I like that. Plus I like you didn't have to cut it all up. The lock is still there. It's still you don't need it though because you're gonna overall the top lock is gonna lock the entire system now okay so once you have that in place you go around to all four of your sides get them all clamped down nice and tight where you want drill a bunch of holes and they're you know they're already pre-marked for you on the on the outside because the top bars should be on the outside and the bottom bars should be on the inside so just clamp them, build a bunch of, drill a bunch of holes, um, and uh, don't screw anything in yet because what's going to happen is once you have that, here she is. Once you have, once you have those rails together, I'm going to take you off here. Once you have the rails together, you can see they don't fit perfectly. I mean, you, I could throw a clamp on there, squeeze that in a little bit, and put some more screws in there if I wanted to, more bolts in there. But it's good enough for right now. But you can see how close I got it up here. Okay. So this section here, at the top of the bottom box, where the U.S. General is, those are the 10 millimeter bolts. They're, I think, M4s. So they're longer because it's got to go through the handle, it's got to go through two side rails, the box, and that center support that I showed you, you know, that runs along the front here to hold the box up. So it's quite a bit. That's the only thing, uh, the only modification. So uh, once you do that and you've got your box all together, it's on top of each other, uh, it's starting to look like a box, you get to the point where you're going to need the grinder um, because what happens is it ends up being short uh, I got to get back to my things here okay it ends up being short 
the rails. You can see how I did mine. They don't quite meet up. There's a big hole, a gap between the lower portion. I took the black caps off from here. Okay. Um, yours may vary because I kind of screwed mine up and cut the locking tabs off my drawer so I had to make new locking tabs. So your distance might be different than mine. But what you have to do is put some kind of metal or something to connect the top to the bottom and leave the hole in the center because that's where the locking tab fits into. Then the top one slides down over it to lock, but it also pushes the bottom one down to lock the bottom drawers. So you're going to need, I this is what I used, I just had them laying around and I just actually CA glued them because there's not a lot of space to drill. Uh, those thin rails are really, real small. Um, so for I don't know, know how long that's going to hold up, but until I come up with a better plan, because I can't weld, if you could weld, you could probably weld a couple plates there when you figure out the correct distance. That's where the thinking comes in, is coming up with the correct uh, distance to make sure that it's going to lock when you close the lid of the box. But I mean, really, it's really simple uh construction to to build it um because on the bottom of the box the only thing you're doing to the bottom of the box is you're taking the lid off drilling out the pop rivets to take the lid completely off and you're cutting those notches in the corners i showed you so the box will slide into the rails and that's the only modification that you're making on the bottom box the top box the only modification to get it to lock is like i said leaning it over so the drawers face up so you can see the bottom, take the bottom drawer out, cut out those little inch by inch and a half and with, you'll see when you remove the box, you'll see the rails. So you just need to cut out. The rail's not going to fall out or nothing that's in there, but you're cutting out so it can pass through to close the locking mechanisms on the bottom of the box because this is still what it looks like on the bottom of the box. But I took mine off because I didn't have the clearance because the um, new locking tabs I had to put on the bottom of my box were thicker. So you might be able to leave those in. So you're going to have to play with it a little bit. That's the only part that's going to need some figuring. But when you do, it's cool because all, drawer, all the 10 drawers lock. You close the lid. Locks. And then on the bottom, let's see if I can get you down there more. Locks. They lock. Okay? If you don't cut out those tabs like I showed you, your box will not, it'll lock on the top, but it won't lock on the bottom. And this is cool. I wanted mine to lock. Uh, a lot of times in the summertime, I leave my garage door open when I'm out doing stuff. Um, and I've had some stuff walk off. I've had some tools walk off, um, which is sad, you know, for my neighborhood. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this way they're going to have to take the whole damn cart with them. Good luck with that. So another reason I did it this way, too, um, because I like the handle orientation this way. Um, it's much nicer than that than the side. It was hard to maneuver. Even, you know, this is really easy to move around now with the four casters, but I really like this orientation of the handles. Uh, and you have two handles now, so that's cool. And then I put on the... Take, take you off here. I put on the side tree. I put one really low at the bottom, and you can determine where you want yours, you know, where the, where the holes go. Um... I just, you know, because they mount on the side, so I could have put them in the top or the bottom, or I could have put them there, or I put this one lower because of the shelf. When I close the shelf, it, it clears all that stuff. Um, I like the shelf. I just put, uh, well, I had some leftover liner. Uh, put that on there, double-sided tape. That one I got to redo because the tape sucked. <laughs> um, I blacked out with the blackout kit. I didn't really care for the chrome. The U.S. General... Uh, is going to come off the bottom box. The lock's going to stay, but the U.S. General is going to come off. Then on this side, I put the other container up a little bit higher. Uh, 
you know, this is nice if you're standing. That's nice if you're down on the ground working on something. And then uh, I'm probably going to black out this handle maybe. Then also at Harbor Freight, they sell that anti-fatigue mats. They're super, super thin and they're not really, for me, good for that. But it works perfect. Uh, Double-sided tape again. I didn't want to glue it or nothing. Because the paint scuffs up on these things incredibly easy. I don't think you can see, but there's a big old scratch already there. Um, this, this paint is just, it's not the best. It's pretty, but uh, it, it doesn't hold up very well. It scuffs very easily. So I put on that anti-fatigue mat here so I have a nice work surface. I love it. It's great. Uh, I might even take off this cheaper one and put one over here on the side. And then, you know, all the magnetic doodads. I liked, and as you can see, it clears perfectly. But this thing functions um, perfectly. It works great. I'm very happy with the way it came out. Let me, uh, again, open it up. And I transferred the sticker. <laughs> Love that sticker. But everything opens up great. This is the drawer I messed up. <laughs> I cut the tabs right off. So I had to do some creative construction to fix that. But I think I still probably will um, squeeze those into place and at least put one bowl on each side. It'll just make it look a little neater in appearance. But, you know, it doesn't do anything as far as... Um, it's very stable. I put one here on this side, here on this side. It's incredibly stable, but see, you have dead space in there. That's the top of the box, and then dead space underneath the box. So, depending on your abilities, you can also solve that issue as well because you have that center support piece here that's holding the toolbox up. You could cut this if you wanted to and make it a flip down drawer with a piano hinge here and you could have access to that space if you wanted to. I just liked the height. Um, I'm 5'6 and uh, this is mm, upper chest level to me and, and it's great because I can still I can reach everything and it's a great height for me. The top's a little hard for me to reach because <laughs> I'm short but uh, Guys are generally taller, so it'll work out good for you. So that's my that's my 10 drawer. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, sorry I couldn't shoot a video for you, but like I said, I was kind of fumble-bumbling at first. It was a lot of thinking, uh, more so than any type of fabrication or whatever. It was just trying to figure out how, how to do it without cutting it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the way he did it. I mean, he did an awesome job. I mean, he's done quite a few of them. So he has it down pat. Um, and you can do it that way. You can cut uh, that bottom portion there. And, uh, you know, if that's easier for you. Um, but again, I'm not sure if his drawers will all lock. Uh, mine do. And, and I love it. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Drop them down. Subscribe to the channel. We welcome all, anybody new. Um, I hope you enjoyed my <laughs> kind of screwy instruction here. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Um, if I were to do this again, um, not that I'm going to build a second one. I don't need one. <laughs> but if I were to do it again, I could shoot a video then because it was very simple to put it together this way. Very minimal modification to the carts. Um, and I just like the fact that I didn't have to cut into it. Not that I would ever separate them or anything. I just like the look. It looks really good and it's a little bit taller. All right. Subscribe. Like. Hit that like button. Tell me that you like this video. <laughs> Tell me that you want me to keep making videos. Uh, spring and summer are coming. We're going to get back into hiking and... Um, get home bags and emergency kits and all kinds of that good stuff that you guys like. This has been a little sidetrack, so my winter program is going to be different than my summer program. So I hope you stick around for the summer program. It'll be cool. 
If you want to support the channel, give us a super chat, super like, whatever. Um, all that's greatly appreciated. All the money goes right back into the channel. As you can see, I buy tons and tons of stuff. So I can shoot videos for you guys on the projects that I'm working on. And so you can appreciate it, and hopefully it helps you out. Thanks for sticking around. Um, <laughs> a shout out to the one person who requested this video. <laughs> which is funny and that would be and of course I'm not going to be able to find it now Rick Coppin I hope I'm pronouncing that right if not I'm sorry about that Rick um, I hope this video helps you out I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you guys think of this my 10 drawer cart alright take care to the next video